Hi guys, I am the Trek Collector and welcome to the very first ever episode on YouTube. Basically, I'm going to be chatting about all my Star Trek stuff. Um, all the ships in the background, everything. I'm going to be looking at what we can buy, what we can get. Times have changed so much, uh, the internet is so much better. So it's up to all us guys to keep communicating with each other, dropping comments down, what cool stuff there is coming out in the next few weeks, months, previews, clips, snips, anything. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go and I've already posted up on my Facebook. I'm going to leave a link down below so you can check out my Facebook page. And what I plan to do is every week uh, take photographs first of what I'm going to review and then do my review. So I'm going to start off this week with a lovely ship. It's one of my favourite there's actually my favorite collections is the Bandai collection, uh, which was done back. This one was done back in 2004. It's the USS Voyager uh, by Bandai. It's one 850 scale. This is a beautiful kit. Now, before I go into details on this kit, I just got to say that I'm going to be covering everything between com badges, any uniforms I've gotten, any bits and pieces. I might just do a review as well of what's hot what's coming out so you just can be straight out there get the stuff while it's reasonable because as i'm sure you all know anyone that's collecting star trek stuff anything that you've missed the boat on go back like the 2004 bandai voyager i was lucky enough by chance that i happened to come across it and i was able to buy it there and then i'll go through if, if, if you do want to get this kit it's it, it's fairly dear at the moment so just to stop that because as you know star trek at the time as such had a limited support so special issues and stuff like that were fairly limited and um, if you weren't on the ball you didn't know about these things unfortunately they got into the hands of people that wanted to sell them on ebay at three or four times the market price which is sad to say for us all i am a collector that just loves my ships and happy to share them with anybody uh, basically i'm not in it to collect and hope that my collection goes up in value uh, just i just I love Star Trek for the ships, I love Star Trek for the, the stories, the episodes, pretty much everything. I even got a JJ ship. JJ wouldn't be my biggest fan um, with the, the Kelvin timeline. But as I say, I love all things Trek. Any kind of Star Trek on TV, uh, any of the short productions, any of the fan-made films, love them all. And I want to say big hats off to all you guys that are out there making these productions and keeping Star Trek alive. Fair play to you. You've got my thumbs up. So, starting off, we are doing the USS Bandai 1A50 USS Fighter. In my opinion, this is a very, very... The Bandai collection is a very hard piece of kit to beat. I know QM, uh, QMX are doing some great detailed models at the moment. Now, the price is fairly, fairly dear. I would love to save up and... <laughs> I'd love to get their Enterprise D. I'd love to get a few other ships. They're absolutely beautiful, but I don't have that kind of money. So to me, I think the Bandai are kind of the, the, the best uh, reprodu uh, reproductions of a Star Trek ship. Um, they've done a series of the NX-01. They've done the Refit Enterprise. They've done the Enterprise A, Voyager, and the Enterprise E. I surprised with the 50th edition that bandai haven't jumped on the bandwagon and re-released this kit these kits because i think they're absolutely fantastic and hopefully maybe with the series relaunching they are all series ships bar the enterprise e maybe uh, and of course sorry correction the the enterprises the refit and the, the the a i suppose are movie ships as well but maybe hopefully bandai will look and go back and do these ships because as i said the detail is absolutely perfect so these are a snap together kit has lighting and they're just fantastic so i'll, I'll sh show you in a few minutes uh, the, the the kit in detail that's it behind me there as we can see no lights on it yet let me show you the box like um i got this back in I ordered it in December and I think I got a late January. I bought it from Japan. Most of the instructions were in Japanese, but the photographs were absolutely fantastic. But this is the size of the box that I got this bad boy in. And I have to say, like, 
the box is absolutely fantastic. Ship actually comes with um landing gear if you want not my kind of cup of tea um it, again it's it's down to everyone's preference um it's not something that suits with me i kind of like the models kind of as if they're blasting through space i also used to build some models of probably the best ones i've done was an enterprise d enterprise c i'll probably show you that later on just what the kits were like back then i haven't got any of the newer kits uh the, the newest kit that i've got would be the refit enterprise which i'm taking my time on i've also got a light kit for that for that kit of a very kind of well-known guy in the trade which i will do a review on the light kit um when i get further on in the build i'm not gonna go out and show you how to build kits there's enough guys out there um trek 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 yards um no not trek yards sorry yeah trek works great guy Fantastic, does a brilliant job. So if you ever want to know how to build your Star Trek kits, check his site page out on Facebook. So, um, look guys, like, share, click, spread the word, feedback, comments, throw them down there. Give us all any ships that you want to see reviewed. I'll check and see. A uh, little bit of detail is that this kit was released in December 2004. Initially, the price was in dollars. It was eighty-five dollars to ninety dollars. Uh, in the UK, it was retailed for seventy-five pound, which worked out at about ninety euro. Now, as far as I can remember, I paid in around the 90, 90 to one hundred euro to get this kit delivered from Japan. As I said, it took about a month and a half, but by oh man, this was worth the wait. This is kind of like when I seen the kit for the first time. It was literally like seeing that refit enterprise on screen i was absolutely blown away the paint scheme everything is just perfect and as i said on my facebook page if you check it out i have photographs up of mike and doug working on the studio model and i also have photographs of my model so like if you look closely enough you can actually see how well the paint schemes match i do believe that you could probably if they had to blow up an intrepid during the film and they could have act easily used this model kit and just blown it up because it's just so screen accurate uh rating for this kit i suppose is gonna have to be a five out of five um the lighting part is very very easy it's a snap to get a kit there's nothing too hard if you want to avail of this kit uh it is very very expensive it's down to yourself i personally i love it so much but I would not be prepared to pay the kind of money, but everyone to their own. If you're a big fan favorite of Voyager, yes, it's it, it's definitely one to get. Another thing as well, guys, any of have this. I know a lot of guys out there like buying the stuff and just, you know, putting it in a box and shelving it and it's a build to do. But if you have any of the, these Bandai kits, please guys, build them. They're well worth it. Um, if you're not too comfortable with your model builds, there's enough YouTube stuff out there these days to help you with your builds. I was not the greatest back then. I did an all right job. You know, looking at it, I could go back and do some more work. I could probably pull the kit apart and sand it down a bit, but I don't want to take the chance of breaking anything. Um, if you want to avail of this kit, Amazon.co.uk. There is two. One going for three hundred and thirty nine pound twenty one pence, and there's another site that's selling it for six hundred and sixty six pound and sixty cents, and that's on Amazon. So just put in Bandai USS Voyager, it should come up. You'll see the box. Then in the US, I have come across two on eBay. Uh, one's an auction or best offer, and that's four hundred and eighty dollars. And there's another one, five hundred dollars. So you know, it's it, it's a hard kit. Yeef. Is it worth that kind of money? I look, guys. Any of that have that kit, draws a line. Give us the comments. But without further ado, I am going to show you in detail my lovely, lovely kit. What I'll probably do is kill some lights, um, light the kit for you. I'll I have an overhead light as well, so I can show you with light. So. Hang on in there, guys.
Okay guys and welcome back. Um, here is the beautiful Bandai 1850 USS Voyager NCC 74656. Um, absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to go in a bit close there. Just do a flyover. a bit more now in a second so just to give you guys an idea of the ship itself it's a lovely kind of a view there isn't it focus in on some of the detail now a second guys the stand is actually quite sturdy which is cool better than the diamond select ones <laughs> we'll save that for another day okay so I'm just kind of trying to bring the light forward a bit so just so you can kind of get some more detail in here so as you can see we have Voyager NCC Seven four six five six. Nice little docking port there at the front, and we've got great detail in on our sensor arrays there, and we have our our thrusters there, and going into our secondary deflector dish, which I I think was a nice feature in this design, due to the the kind of the design of the ship. With this kind of kind of higher raised primary hull, so I I I like that actually that 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 uh, feature. Plus as well, it makes kind of sense to have a backup deflector array. So we got to the sensor array or deflector dish, I should say. Sorry. Um, here's our sensor array. Lots of details into this now, and we'll pop in over to one of the lifeboats here. Two. Isn't that great? Just the way that they're numbered like that and so, so, so clear. So heading back. <sighs> Captain's red room. Would be this one here. And our conference room. We see a lot of the scenes. With them all sitting around the table having a discussion on how to fix the world or how to get back home to the Alpha Quadrant so we're just focusing in on the bridge and there's the turbo shafts there and some more lifeboats and a little bit of a sensor array there and we've got our main sensor array, which is cool. At the back. Never really knew what that <laughs> kind of yellow thing was ever meant to be. But we have our aft boat on torpedo launchers, which I did like. Now, unfortunately, you can see the one disadvantage with snap together kits is just just there. Now, I know some people do tend to glue these snap together kits. Um, I haven't. But I probably should have. Now the only one let down for me is you see the three windows at the back. They don't actually light up, unfortunately. But I'm going to show the lights now in a few minutes. This is, I'm afraid, is one sad part. A bit of damage to the paintwork, and as you can see as well, like there's kind of like this nice kind of a weathering effect on the ship and the shuttle bay as well. It's absolutely fantastic. Now I have to say I do actually like the scale of this model. I think it's actually well suited for the ship it's not too big it's not too small um, here is the warp nacelle and these are actually movable so I'll play along with them now in a second so it's just going to give you a side profile view of Voyager so 
as you can see like the the paint to me now is absolutely spot on in this ship you, know, you can see where kind of when I was building this model and taking it apart from the sprues just see a little bit there that I didn't correctly clip it apart but again here's another docking port and then while it's lying down on the side we're going to be coming along to the Voyager's Aero Shuttle in a second there's Voyager's Aero Shuttle um, this was Voyager's support craft um, kind of like the captain's yacht except because the Intrepid will be a smaller class ship obviously it's kind of be a bit greedy now to give Captain Janeway uh, a captain's yacht so Voyager came equipped with an Aero Shuttle and you can see scenes of this on YouTube Departing. The reason why this was dropped was because uh, during filming of Insurrection, they decided that they wanted to use the captain's yacht. So rather than, they wanted to keep it for basically the cinema, as opposed to the TV series. So that's how Voyager then, they decided to design the Delta Flyer, which was kind of cool, because I do actually like the Delta Flyer, but it's such a shame that we never actually got to see this beautiful, beautiful support craft in action on the TV screens which would be nice but who knows Star Trek's coming back in 2017 so maybe we might have an Intrepid launch uh, an Aero Shuttle it would be kind of cool um, kind of like on the side just going in so like phaser rays are fairly well that's where the landing gears go in you can see the the warp core where the warp core is housed or I should say where it can be ejected from it was actually a great episode of Voyager when they dumped the core so as you can see guys the detail is absolutely stunning we'll turn around and show you the other side guys so it takes three AA 1.5 batteries I do know that some guys have hooked their mm, their base is up to main vaults. It's actually something that I am currently looking at myself. It's actually not that hard to do, really. It is quite easy. So it is something that I should do because you know yourself when you have a collection and so forth, changing bulbs all the time, or if you leave the likes of this on for probably 12, 12 hours, that's kind of pretty much the end of your batteries. And it can be quite expensive buying batteries all the time. So... Rick Steinbeck um, helped uh, Bandai produce this model and to me it's quite evident just to colour if you see it on my Facebook page you will actually see I've put up some photographs of Rick and Doug working on the model um, for the TV show and then my model and you can kind of see like how closely matched the colours are and so forth but like this is absolutely a fantastic job um, I don't think I'd be able to ever replicate a model as good as this so as I said now when you start looking at these kind of details and you kind of sum up the price like for 90 euro or 75 pound or 90 dollars it, it wasn't a bad price especially with the lights and so forth like that um, as I said like the great thing with this model I love this kind of a uh, that kind of a shot there. It's absolutely beautiful. So we're just gonna take in the cells and have her going into warp. And I'm gonna switch on the lights for you guys now. So I'm gonna kill this overhead light. Now there's still a little bit of light coming in, unfortunately, but as you can see. That's more so because, as we can see, starting to come, a, come apart there. But as I said, this for light leaks is actually quite good. There's barely any, which is fantastic. That's one of the, the nightmares of building a lighted kit, is blocking out all those light leaks. Again, my inexperience with modeling at the time, could have probably done a better job separating that from the sprues, but... Um, let's see if we can 
get in here and see it. the impulse actually lights up so as I said at the back unfortunately see it's not light up I think that's kind of like my only one kind of complaint about this model I think it's absolutely fantastic I just think as I said scale wise is absolutely perfect paint color perfect Um, easy to assemble yeah it is easy to assemble uh, details and instructions yeah they're fairly straightforward I uh, can't remember if they were in Japanese but even if they were in Japanese it was fairly straightforward you don't have to be an electrician or a rocket scientist or an expert on doing model lighting to put these it's it the bulbs and actually are just kind of like rice bulbs so it's it, it, it is it, it's fairly very easy um so you know that main deflector dish Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So, guys, I hope you actually like the Bandai One Eight Fifty USS Enterprise. As I said, she is very expensive now at the moment. Um, if you just want to try and do more kind of like research into trying to actually find her, um, I have for years and have failed. That's just. If you wanted to take it off its stand, as in you can just actually pop that in. Um, if you want to do any filming with the model, let's say. So that's actually a cool piece. So that piece just goes directly there. And here's our here's our landing gear. As I said, each to their own if they wanted to put them. But it, it, it leaves a kind of that you can actually, you know, if you change your mind, like I'd be able to pop out if I wanted to put the landing gears in. I would be well able to be well able to do it um, just in relation to anyone that's collecting the Eagle Moss collection just to give you an idea of scale I suppose we will put the Eagle Moss rider beside it so okay So, put it side by side. Okay. And then maybe to make it a little bit more kind of interesting, I might just get the... Uh, I suppose I'll go with the Kelvin. Because I'd say this is special that most people would have got at the start of the Eagles Mark. Because I know some people just stopped getting the specials and so forth and i know people did drop out of the subscriptions early enough so just to it's the only reason why i'm picking a jj so i don't want any jj bashing <laughs> not to worry guys but that's that's it in scale with the the uss calvin from eagle moss's uh, star trek collection so she is absolutely fantastic. If I was to rate this ship and give it a rating, I would have to give a 4.5 out of 5. And the only reason she didn't doesn't get 5 is because of the fact that she is actually... Doesn't light up the lights. Um, you know what I mean? If you're going to do a lighting kit, I may be a bit harsh. I think they've done a great job, but you know what I mean? To make those transparent... And you have a light and get realistically they should light up but otherwise than that she is a brilliant brilliant kit so guys i hope you actually liked seeing that model hit the comments let us know what you think i think personally it is a beautiful one i know there's other one guys and yes i will be talking about them as i said i'm missing all but one i'm missing the Enterprise A, which isn't a big deal because I have got 
the refit. So they're, they're fairly similar. I know there's a few little bits and pieces that are different. So what I'm probably going to do uh, for my next review is I'm probably going to hit one of the Diamond Select models. Um, I will be doing uniforms as well. Com badges, communicators, phasers, anything Star Trek. Anything. You, anything Star Trek. Uh, what I have, I'll be going through it all. Um, as I said, I'm just going to let you know at the moment, um, coming up soon in October, uh, the Star Trek Encyclopedia is coming out. And if you pre-order it now on Amazon in the UK, it's £65 sterling as opposed to £100. And it's about $88 in the States and I believe it's $150. So they're a great deal. So that's one thing to look out for now at the moment. So pre-order it. I had the first edition of the Encyclopedia and it was my gospel back then. And Mike Kuda has done a fantastic job. Him and his wife, big in Star Trek, have the continuity going through the design with the L cars and anyone that's collecting the Eagle Moss uh, collection would if they've got the shuttle packs the little cards that you've got the L cars that was Mike's design so you know thumbs up nice addition I would like to see you doing kind of A4 displays it'd be absolutely fantastic I'd love it an A4 L car plastic cut out of a, the, the Galaxy you know, something I can just put a light behind. Um, I think it'd be absolutely sweet. So, you know, that's kind of the best deal out there at the moment. Any of you guys collecting the Eagle Moss collection, I know it's available in the States, believe it or not, I can't actually believe this. You guys actually got this fella first. This is the USS Enterprise. It's the Enterprise E plaque. You know, not too many people do reviews on these plaques. Uh, I might do a full review on all the plaques at a later date, but I have to say these are pretty cool. Any of you guys that um, do modeling, um, at the moment I'm currently working on the Defiant. I'm not actually going to use flashy, flashy, blinky, blinky. I'm just doing a plug-in, light-up job. So pretty much nearly there. I just have to do the underside lights, glue the kit together. Pretty sure it's fairly light blocked and you know, join it together, do a little bit of resealing. So I might show you that one, but as I said, I've used that as the base, which is kind of cool, and it's a defined one. So any of these guys that do do have models, like this is a lovely little piece to have displayed. Maybe the next video I'll, sh I'll show you what I've done, and it was it was a two minute job because I know a lot of guys are trying to think of how to display their models. I know with my 1350 refit enterprise i'm not 100 percent sure what way i'm going to go yet am i going to try and go for the nice classic l car design with the shields going up around it because it's a big model it's a it's a wow factor i've spent quite a bit of money on the lights so you know or else i could just simply just put that in front and just have the model i don't know yet um it's one thing so that is available on the eagle Moss website it's not part of the collection if you are signed up for it you have to get it yourself uh, so check out their website, whichever one you're in, if you're in the States or the UK, that is now available. As I said, you don't see much reviews, I have to say, it's deadly. They added their little hooks on the back there recently. Um, I think with pretty much every single plaque for all the Starships by the Enterprise B and C, which would be nice. I'd like to see those plaques. I'd also like to see other plaques. I'd like to see the Reliant and so forth. Um, maybe the Stargazer. Another thing that came out um, just recently... And this one's a bit dear. <clears throat> is the communicator. This is absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> this is by the wine company. Enterprise. Spock here. It is yeah. a Bluetooth. Here, it links to your phone. No bother. The only thing that I'm... I haven't really bothered reading the instructions. It's, it's fairly straightforward. There's an on-off. You flip it open. It connects like a gem to your phone. It, it's screen accurate. Okay, so that's exactly what it looked like in TOS. Beautiful. One point. They had to put that on. Let's see. But, ah, I can live with that. Um, they give you a nice little pouch for it. I think it would have been kind of cool if they kind of made it that you could put it into a belt. Um, it might be something that I'm going to have to, unfortunately, I don't like kind of 
mucking around with stuff like this because like this is it this is absolutely a beautiful piece a little blue light flashing there for the show that's connected it is straightforward um i don't know if you can make that out it's spiraling around there this is a lovely piece it is 119 pounds sterling and it's about 148 us dollars uh, it's done by the one company i know forbidden planet in the uk are doing it. i'm not too sure who in the states are doing it but again I think Tink Geek, uh, Tink Geek, Geek are doing it there. Um, any of you guys in the in the Republic of Ireland, I got this and it was under 150 euro from Forbidden Planet. I know with electronics and stuff like that, it's very hard to kind of get shipped out from the UK. I seem to have no problems. Uh, this is, I use this. <laughs> I've just figured out that you can actually slap your phone on charge in the same room can have that and if you get a phone call it goes doo, doo, doo. you can hear your phone ringing a bit of a flick hello how's it going grand so you don't have to worry about unplugging your phone from charge it comes in this lovely lovely box and you know what? i'm gonna have to go and try and get get out there and try and get the phaser it, the phaser is a remote control tv remote control this is the box that comes in brilliant i love it and um, i think i will go out there and get the the phaser um, comes with a lovely absolutely fantastic instruction book so guys like if you're sitting on the fence on this one buy it and buy it now because you know yourself if you don't realistically get this in the next two to three months chances are it's going to be gone um, and you're probably looking unless you go to a Star Trek convention which I know there's a lot on this year it's an exciting year to be a Star Trek fan you are going to be probably paying well, it's well, it's a uh, hundred and fifty euro now. You're probably looking at the three hundred euro mark by this time next year, um, because it is such, it's a lovely piece. It is practical as well. Uh, it does hook to your phone, no problem at all. It's it does have voice interface as well. So, at the moment, I have a Samsung S seven, so I am looking to try and set up what voice software is best suited and easy to suit, so I can dial numbers and so forth like that. But so far, it is brilliant. The speaker is good. Some people are saying that the speaker, the volume level isn't that great. There is a volume control. You can actually raise it up. So, you know what I mean? Don't be pushed away by that. I think in fairness, what your phone speaker can do to what that speaker can, can do is pretty much, you know what I mean? It's the same speaker strength as your phone. So just bear that in mind. It's, it's, it's not a big, big independent speaker. But they are... Two things to look out for this year. And as I said, don't forget about the encyclopedia, guys. If it is one thing that you're looking to buy, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you're saving £35 sterling uh, and you're saving 60-odd dollars um, if you book it online, if you pre-order on Amazon, which is which is great. So, guys, without any more, I'm going to leave it there. Please like, share. Throw down comments, guys. I want to hear your views. Tell me what you think of my Bandai 1850 USS Fighter. Tell me what you think about the Intrepid Glass. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What did you think of USS Fighter when it first came out? Uh, what did you think of Captain Janeway? Uh, you know, let's let's get some things chatting and let's get things going. And as I said, next week I will hit a Diamond Select. If anyone is sitting on the fence about the diamond select let me know speaking of the diamond select they do have a special anyone that's lucky enough to go to the san diego uh, comic con which is in and around the 21st of july please get us one of the nice cbs pins that they're doing across the way before you go in send it to me be really grateful and uh, they're giving out free uh, pin badges uh for the 50th anniversary of star trek Diamond Select are doing a 300 limited piece edition of the USS Enterprise A. Why the A? I don't know. They should be doing TOS. They should be doing the, the original Enterprise. That would be moon. Spray painted the gold. They've left the duck egg blue in. It's a bit of a monstrosity. Um, I liked the defiance that they had last year. I would have liked to get my hands on it. Um, I know some people were kind of giving out about the... the the colour of it but I think it, it was a nice piece and to have another another constellation class or constitution class starship like the Defiant would have been cool for the collection especially with 
still in the model the USS Defiant the NX would have been nice to have the two side by side so that's one to look out for any of you guys that happen to be going to San Diego Comic Con and by the way guys if you are going please give us the old shouts and let us know exactly exactly what you're looking forward to and how you get on anyway guys Trek Collector like share comment below and I will see you guys soon thanks for tuning in bye